Hi, it's Tony from CassetteComeback.com and today I'm going to be talking about some cassettes which well let me put it this way a lot of people say you know in forums and discussions you know if you had to stumble across a stash of any tapes what would it be and my answer is the same every single time without hesitation Denon give me Denon cassettes because as it turns out apart from you know the odd one or two like you know your MAXGs and your Sony Metal Masters etc and cassettes which are from manufacturers and when I mean that I don't mean normally Sony but I mean you know like the Kenwoods, the Yamahas, the uh, Pioneers you know OEM but branded as manufacturers apart from them Denon are probably the most consistently expensive cassettes out there so as far as you know regular cassettes that were sold in shops quite regularly back in the day Denon are probably the most consistently expensive ones of the lot now me personally I don't remember Denon cassettes back in the day but I didn't really frequent hi-fi shops when I was buying cassettes I was a kid I had limited money you know I went to the chain stores and bought bricks of 10 max LURs or if I was feeling flush SAs etc so I never really encountered Denon and Denon as a brand I never really encountered until my mid-teens in the 90s when I used to work in a shop which used to buy and sell TVs, videos, hi-fis and computers and I had a Saturday job in there because I was really up on Sega and Nintendo and it's only then that I started to recognise certain hi-fi brands you know Marantz, Denon, TIAC etc and came to know Denon as being makers of good gear so when it came to coming back to cassettes I was seeing Denon cassettes and thinking wow Denon cassettes I wonder what they're like and then seeing the prices and going, I'm not that bothered about finding out. Now, a lot of people have said that they think Denon cassettes weren't made by Denon, they were made by somebody else. And that's not the case. Denon did make their own cassettes. So, just to, to prove that, I'm going to pick probably the cassette that Denon is most famous for, at least the formulation, which is the HD8 formulation. And why is that so famous for Denon? Because it's a metal particle formulation. Now, you know we have the TDK HXS and we have the that's EMX and EX, etc. All metal particle type 2s. Let's just read the back on here and, you know, this isn't said lightly because it's libelous otherwise. But if we can see here, this HC8 is the fourth generation of a process Denon invented in 1983 that combines pure metal particles with EX2 purified black crystal so the metal particle type 2 Denon say we made this we created this process they can't say that if they were just OEMing other people's stuff and indeed they didn't just OEM other people's stuff in fact they made stuff for other people for example look at this Denon DX1 right look at the shell look at particularly round here the sort of can you see the sort of squares with the hub in it yeah this dx1 compare that with this south american market pioneer nx1 can you see there it has the same squares in the circles around there why because these cassettes are both made by denon so denon made for other people not just for themselves. They also made the 3M Blackwatch series as well. And I pointed that out in my recent video regarding hub types. But they went through many generations. That's a great cassette. Uh, my favourite generation is this one, which these two come from. I mean, there's, there's two versions of the HD7 here, but these are sort of in the sweet spot, the late 80s and early 90s. Now, where we said the HD8 is the metal particle type 2, the HD7 is their top of the line, otherwise normal ferro cobalt type 2. And indeed, the HD7 you can think of as sort of being Denon's equivalent of the SAX and the XL2S. And like I said, that I always like the back where they always put things like this. This is the same 
This is where the recommended peak level is on this. Plus six. They say plus six is where this tape is living the finest. And, you know, I'll go into this shell a bit later, but we've got the standard 3D Denon hubs. But yeah, this generation, the, the late 80s, early 90s, fantastic cassettes, really are. I mean, this is just a classically beautiful cassette. And again, I like the way on the back they always have all the characteristics and the, the sol and the mall and sensitivity and all that. You know, Denon were renowned for making good hi-fi, so they had to make sure that their cassettes were also good. It's like this one. This is one of the later generations of the Metal Particle HD8, and this is... I mean, look, look at this shell. This shell's awesome. The tape's awesome. These are never ever cheap for a reason because they are universally fantastic cassettes. I've never met a bad Denon cassette. I mean they've got another generation of the HD7. Now this one's an interesting one because if you look at the shell on this yeah you'll have seen this shell before. This shell comes from a company called General Magnetics in Singapore. The people who I figure actually made the old Maxwell knockoffs but they actually were legit and I've seen this shell not only on Denon's I've seen it on PDMs, Philips DuPonts, and I've also seen it on Philips as well. Now, did Philips make these? Are they all the same tape? I don't think so. I think even though Denon might have outsourced some of the bits, they actually still made the tape inside of them. And I'll show you what I mean. It's, it's this one. This is a, a very light Japanese Denon called the Cedo. Now, come on, let's have a look at these hubs. Look at these hubs. Where are these hubs from? These aren't the typical Denon hubs. Where are these from? Yeah, if you look at the hubs and you look at the cassette on this, it's a Saihan shell with Saihan hubs. But this Type 2 doesn't perform like any Saihan Type 2 that I've used, which have always been, you know, decent at best. But this still performs really well. And what else have we got? Well. We said that the HD7 was the equivalent of the SA, uh, sorry, the SAX, I should say. So the HD6 is Denon's equivalent of the good old SA. I mean, I don't like this affordable high bias. Why cheapen stuff by putting this on there? But again, HD6, sort of Denon's equivalent of the SA. And again, you see, it's saying you can't quite run this. It doesn't recommend you run it quite as hard as a HT7, definitely in the 6, HT6 run it a bit lower and again a really good generation of the HT8, this is the I think 92 version what does it say here, oh look at the HT8 saying run it at nearly plus 8, I mean I know we're supposed to run the uh, metal particle type 2's hot but nearly at plus 8 wow that's, that's, that's a lot of signal for a cassette, a lot of signal but the thing is as well, like we have the DX1 there, and this is a late DX1, which the hubs on this don't look typical Denon, and if anything they look like 80s TDK, but um, I found that the very basic type 1s from Denon are also really, really good. There's just something a bit about them. I mean, I'll show you what I mean. This is my favourite entry level, probably type 1. You know, when I say entry level, I'm talking... S, uh, sorry, H, F, U, R, and D. The Denon DX. And it's just something about it. Just look at the slightly smoked shell. Look at the, the, you know, this isn't a sticker. It's actually on the slip sheet. It just looks classy. And it sounds superb. I'm, I'm going to test this. I'm going to show you how good an entry type 1 can sound by doing some recording on this one. And then we go up to this. Now, I have none of these sealed. These are some of the most expensive and rare cassettes you could ever want. And the only ones I've got, I've used because I love them. This is a top five cassette for me. The Denon DX4. I mean, just look at it. That lovely gold sticker. And that's like a foil gold sticker. So it's on nice and flat, you know, instead of it being a paper-based gold sticker, which can go bumpy. The blue hubs, the lovely windowed shell. This to me 
is one of the great cassettes. This can take signal like nobody's business and it sounds absolutely superb. And I just absolutely love the DX4. And then we go to the other end of the spectrum, the good old HD8. And in this version, which is the 87 version, I think this could be the nicest shell of tape ever come in. You know, if I was to redesign a cassette now and someone said, all right, what sort of shell should we use? There'd be two shells that come to mind. This one, I love. It's just, I don't know, this double window, it just looks classy and different. I love this double window shell. I love the 3D hubs with the green retainers. It would either be this or something like the 1986 Sony Metal ES, which is a two-tone shell, opaque, with a massive window. That and this, I think, are my two favourite shells, but this has the HDA metal particle tape in it, which can really, really take signal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a bit of recording from both ends of the spectrum. I'm going to do some recording on the DX, and I'm going to do some recording on the HD8, so you can see both sides. I mean, yes, Denon did do metal tapes as well, and I imagine they're superb. I've never had one. I mean, that's the thing. These cassettes are so expensive, and you never really see them in quantity, and if you do, they're just so expensive. I mean, if you look on my web store, yeah, this ain't for sale on there. This ain't for sale on there. That 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 ain't for sale on there. Why? Because they're mine. I love Denon cassettes. I, I've never had a bad one. I know some people in my groups and forum who absolutely hate Denon cassettes. Well, one guy does, saying that, you know, the, the mechanically noisy and mechanically terrible. I've, I've never encountered that. Denons have been consistently the most impressive cassettes I've used. You know, I put them up there, Denon, that's, they're just brilliant, but I prefer Denon to that's. I really do. I love the that, that shells and stuff, but I just, I don't know, it, personal preference. I just prefer Denon. But let's have a listen to them and see if I'm just talking hyperbole or if they really are as good as what I'm saying. Okay, so for this part, I'm going to use two new things. The first I'm going to use is this Revox B215. And I've got to give a shout out to the eBay seller Ole Hi-Fi, aka Klaus, who said this was a mint deck, that it was a single owner, that he'd overhauled, looked mint, sound mint, and recorded mint. And to be fair, he's absolutely right. Very, very pleased with this. And he managed to ship it all the way from Germany, without it ending up like a box of Lego by the time it got to me. So, thank you very much, Klaus. Ollie Hi-Fi, yeah, recommended. If you've got some decks on there that you fancy, give him a shout, because, uh, yeah, it does take his time on these. So why did I get a B215? Well, I like open world decks, and this, to me, has always been the daddy of open world decks, and the best reason to buy anything, really, is because you want it, and I just wanted one, and... No doubt the comments will come in, you know, because they have when I posted this on a Facebook group I'm a member of. Which you like better, Dragon or Evox? Dragon or Evox? I'm not picking, because I've got both, <laughs> so I don't need to pick. But uh, I think this is a superb recording deck, super playback deck. It looks fantastic, so I think probably I'll be putting my little dual two well, uh, sorry, open well two heads up for sale, because I can't really see me using another open world deck when I've got this bad boy here. The other new thing I'm going to be using is a new tune by myself. You know, under my Villa Rosso moniker, and it's called Marathon, because uh, I really hate the way that they change the name to Snickers. Only English people will get that. But no, it's a tune that I came up with when I was on a treadmill, and I hate treadmills. My mind is too active for me to use treadmills. I get so bored, you know, I'm just running on it, going, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored. <laughs> and then a song came to me, a song to run along to. That's why it's called Marathon. And I think it's going to be a good workout for the tapes because I've got a lot of bass in there, I've got a lot of treble in there, I've got good drum beats, but there's also... Lots of different melodies playing at the same time. So, have a listen to it. See if the tape captures all of the intricacies of the different melodies and see which one of the melodies which is playing at the same time you like the best. At one point, there's five 
playing at the same time. I was really layering it up there. So, before I continue, just need to let you know that you can download and listen to Marathon in full here. Bing! And also it's available on iTunes and Tidal and Spotify, the usual places. And if you hate it, you just have to suffer through this video and never hear it ever again. Now, the first thing you'll notice is this isn't a DX1, that's a DX4. And between doing the last segment and coming over to do this, I thought, no, if I'm going to do Denon, I should do the best of Denon. The DX1 is a superb entry-level cassette, it really is. But I'm going to do the best of Denon, and the best of Denon in my book is a DX4 and the HD8. So, this has already been biased up by the Revox with the AutoCal. I'm going to record this at around plus four. I know I could record it hotter, but I've got to the point where I don't see the benefit. Plus three, plus four is about where I record a good Type 2 or a Super Ferric. So, I'm going to keep this at around four. So, without further ado, let's do a live recording of let me just get it queued up uh, you know something yes there we go so let's get a live version of marathon by villa rosso and you can listen to yourself how good a denon type one can be There we go. <clears throat> the DX4. All I can say is, I think this is one of the best tapes ever made. It looks fantastic, sounds fantastic, holds up really well. Yeah. Is this a top five tape? 
I dare say so. And I think of it in the same class as the Fuji FR1 Super and the Sony HFES as a superb Type 1, but that also means it's also one of the most superb cassettes ever. Absolutely love them. So now we move over to the glorious and gorgeous HD8 Metal Particle. So let me just let the deck bias this one up. So bear with me a second. Marathon on a Denon HG8. There we go. Done on HC8. Yeah, looks great, sounds great. What a combination that was, eh? Yeah. Feel very blessed. So there we go. Done on cassettes. Hard to find. Expensive to acquire now, but universally from everyone I've used, great looking, great sounding. Really, these as a range are the definition of a premium product. Apart from that one says affordable high bias, I shouldn't have put that there. But these are premium tapes, and again, yes, you can get some that sound just as good for less money. Well, Maybe, I mean, HC8s, are you getting Metal Particle, that's EMX, EX, or TDK HSS, HXS for less than a HC8? No, you're not, really. HD7s, are you getting TDK SAXs significantly cheaper than a HD7? Not really. Yeah, SAs, SAs you can get cheaper than an HD6. But I prefer the HD6 to, the, to a lot of the SAs, to be honest. And again, the entry level ones, you know, these knocking around, you know, about six and seven pound each. No, I mean, 
these these aren't worth six and seven pound really but if you get them you're not going to feel shortchanged and that's the point price does not equal value it's as simple as that these are beautiful cassettes that sound fantastic and from what I've seen are very hardy because I've had a lot of used Denon no tram lines no dropouts these are hardy cassettes well made so if you feel the need to treat yourself well go and get yourself a Denon I mean don't come to my website because really I don't have any Denons in stock because they're so hard to get here in the UK but if you're in America um, yeah seek them out they're worth paying that little premium for because when you use them when you see them you touch them when you hear them in action you'll know where that money went and I think it's just a shame that Denon cassettes really weren't as popular as they should have been okay so thank you very much for watching another video please like and subscribe and until next time happy taping bye bye